We Brits own more than 20 million pets. Any kisses? They are my kids. They only get the best. And many of us will do anything for them. Lulu! But how do you manage a house full of animals when you're living on benefits? I've got five dogs, seven cats, ten chickens. Meet the people who put their pets first, even when it comes to their cash. Cats about £400 each. £100 a month to feed all carnivores. Got it! Got it. You want to cuddle? You want to cuddle, mummy? <laughs> the woman who shares her council home with 32 animals <laughs> and still wants more... But my plans are to obviously get you more dogs, definitely. That's it. The couple who could be facing a choice between losing their pets and losing their home... We're in arrears of over £1,200. And the man with 24 animals who says he prefers pets to people. They're my life. They're my children. They're my... I have to do everything for them, and uh, I, I get so much enjoyment out of them. Sheffield in Yorkshire. Come on then, dogs. Fed air. 33 year old dog mad Billy. <laughs> hey, come on, guys. Has been on benefits all her adult life. <laughs> oh. I have had no choice but to be dependent on benefits since the day I become independent, which was 15 years old. I was living in a hostel. When I got to my teenage years, I just become really rebellious. My parents call me the devil child. So, yeah, 18 years, I've been slowly working my way out of benefits. Billy currently claims £5,400 a year and tops this up with earnings from part-time work. I get my rent paid for because I only get a certain amount of money a week and I get working tax credits. It's not loads as in the sense it's, a, it's as much as full-time work, but it does mean that I have a little bit of spare income afterwards. But obviously I choose to spend it on animals. Billy is animal-obsessed. Give me kisses. Her pets are here. I've got um, five. Oh. There. I've got seven cats all together. And everywhere. Chickens, I've got ten. Throw in a goose, ducks and ferrets. Babies! And it adds up to 32 pets sharing Billy's one-bedroom council home. Looking after so many pets whilst on benefits isn't easy. So it's about £100 a month to feed all carnivores. It's about £8 a month to feed all uh, herbivores which is all poultry. Can I reckon about 150 quid a month? And if, if it weren't for pets, I, I, I could be buying nice clothes, I could have a nice car, go on a nice holidays, probably have better living conditions, you know what I mean? More, um, back garden would be done up nice, but then but I wouldn't be happy. I really wouldn't be happy. Billy says she's desperate to get off benefits, so she started a part-time dog training business. Literally, it's like having a human baby, having a business baby. You, you, you're restless, you're sweaty, you're, you're flaky, you're forgetful, you panic, you get stressed. <laughs> but it's just part and parcel of running your own business. But there's a problem with Billy's business. She's too good at her job. I've lost count on the amount of people that I've helped on my dog training business. The thing is, is they don't need me as a regular on my dog training business. They employ me once, twice at a push. Never anybody's employed me three times with the dog training. They don't need me anymore. Billy knows it's going to be a long haul. Even though it's set six, seven years later, I'm still struggling to get off benefits. But this is what happens when you set up a business on fresh air, basically. It's going to be a long haul. It's going to be a process. And it's had some tears. But this is how it works. This is the world over. Rugby in the Midlands. Come on, baby. Home to 51-year-old Gary. I would say Kim's a bigger animal lover than me. Yeah. And his 31-year-old wife, Kim. Kim's ideal job would be to work with animals, have a, be like a zookeeper or, or owner or something like that. The couple and their pets live in a newly built housing association flat, which is paid for by benefits. Kiwi! Bubbles! The couple see their five pets as much more than just caged animals. We haven't got any kids together, so basically... They really like our kids. Yeah, so in a, in a way, they are our kids. There's the lovebird called Zorro. When I saw yeah, the black mask, it just reminded me of uh, the character Zorro. Kimbo, a bearded dragon. Is he all right? Yeah, I just need you to check his back passage. He's sleepy, Ed. You want to cuddle? 
and a couple of mummy. Jesse, their one-year-old Russian hamster. Jesse is my favourite one from Little Mix. That's why we called her that. Mm. And two TV-loving miniature parrots. Yeah, the blue one is called Bubbles, and the green one is called Kiwi. They're not too keen on Spice Girls, because I've put that on before, they don't really interact with that. We've noticed that the parrotlets have watched the Jeremy Kyle show before, haven't they, with, with yeah, us? Yeah. Kim and Gary have been on benefits for four years and currently claim £900 a month in joint universal credit. Well, we've been on it since we've been together. And since that's... 2012. Yeah. As I've been on joint since we've been together. So nearly, nearly, currently nearly four years we've been on it. Yeah. Five years ago, Kim was diagnosed with epilepsy, which she says means she can't work. Since I've had my epilepsy, I've not been able to work, so I've tried working before, and I ended up having a massive seizure inside the shop, and it's caused me to stop working. the picturesque village of Chaddleworth in rural Berkshire. Come on. 46-year-old Paul lives here with his 24 pets. Paul's been on benefits for nearly 20 years. Chaddleworth is a very quiet area. Not much really goes on. Get a lot of dog walkers in the summer, a lot of people on horses. So if you're on benefits, yeah, you get people who look down at you. No, I've never talked about it to anyone. I just keep it to myself. Not the sort of thing when you go around bragging about, definitely not. Before Paul escaped to the country 14 years ago, he lived in busy Reading. Now home for Paul and his pets is a quiet three-bedroom council house. What are you two doing? This is Roxy, and that's Missy. Can I have chickens? I have about 20 chickens. Started off with just four, and I went on from there already. Come on. Jasper, Romeo, come on! But having so many pets doesn't come cheap. Missy cost me £250 and Roxy was £100. The cat's about £400 each. Big expense in one go. They're not a rare breed, they're just a pure pedigree. With so many extra mouths to feed, Paul spends around £50 of his £1,000 a month benefit claim on the animals. The money I get, I don't, I don't go out and have luxury time. I don't, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't go out and eat in fancy restaurants or nothing like that. They're my life. They're my children. They're my, I have to do everything for them, and uh, I, I get so much enjoyment out of them. They give me so much back, and I, I just love it so much. <laughs> Come here, Missy. While Paul spends his days caring for his animals, he says he's unfit to work. I've been on benefits for about 20 years because of mental health issues and problems. To prove he's entitled to his benefits, Paul's had a long battle with the Dole Office. Benefits I receive is I get low dis disability living allowance and I also receive ESA support group. But I've had to fight and attend appeals for these benefits because they, they stop the benefits and I've had to get supporting evidence from my GP and um, other p professionals to get all my benefits back. It's OK, you know, saying, oh, I'm lazy, I could be doing this and doing that, but mentally I just can't, can't, can't cope, I can't do things. My last working paid job was at John Lewis in Oxford Street, London. The last time I worked there was August 1997. Coming up, the debts are piling up for Kim and Gary and they could be faced with a heartbreaking decision. Selling the pets would be a very, very last resort. Can Billy's dog training skills but help her escape a life on benefits? And she's allowed to look at it, she's allowed to sniff it. She's not allowed to eat it, though. And Paul explains just how much he gets from his pets. If I, if I didn't have any pets, I would just wouldn't do nothing. You just stay in bed, you just don't, you just don't do nothing. In rugby, Kiwi ball. bird lovers Kim and Gary receive £900 in joint universal credit a month. Need a bag for us. OK, then, I'll get one. Both are out of work, but the couple fill their time looking after their pets. Today's job, cleaning out their two miniature parrots. What if they don't come out the bottom? 
Yeah. I'll be all right, Dad. One at a time. I can't do one at a time. Well, one sheet at a time. I can't, Gary. They're all stuck together. Come on, press them. Yeah. What do you want for dinner? Chicken, bacon, potatoes we'll have. Do you need my help to do the potatoes? Uh, to open the potatoes up? Yeah, you can do. If, don't cook yourself with a tin out there. Over the last 10 years, Gary struggled to hold down full-time work. Due to a stomach complaint, he had to leave his last job at a local discount store after just eight weeks. Well, at the moment, I'm off work sick. And I've had uh, gastroenteritis and I've been really, really poorly. The doctor organised a camera investigation. I've had that done. I'm just waiting for the results. So I'm a bit worried about that because I want to go back to work. You all like that? Yep. But the debts are piling up. The couple owe more than £2,000. Well, I got the temperature right. You can't see what happened, passive. Being off sick has left me, left us really, really, well, in a bad way. So we've only got a third of what we normally get. We've been struggling. It's left us in things like rent arrears and stuff like that. Kim and Gary's biggest expense is the two-bedroom housing association flat they share with their pets. The rent is £500 a month, and right now they can't afford it. We're in arrears of over £1,200-odd pounds in rent arrears. But they're hoping a benefits payout will come to the rescue. We went to an appeal for personal independent payment and, thankfully, Kim has been awarded it. So the money, when we get it, we'll be able to pay our rent arrears off. So, therefore, it means we won't lose our flat. They're done, actually. Yeah, you can dish up. Yes, yeah, so I'll dish up, then. The new payment would be backdated, so it could be thousands of pounds. Some people, if they had that money, would say, oh, let's go on a holiday or something. Or let's go and splash or it let's out go and splash on, on some stuff, other thing. But we We're don't not like do that. With... Don't drop them on the floor. I'm not going to. I'm not like you. While Kim and Gary wait for the money to come through, their food supplies are running low. We've had some veg, but we haven't got any. We had a pack of frozen veg. We used that up the other night. Worst thing about to be on benefits is you can't really afford to go on holiday to, like, escape this. Me and Gary try and save up, but it's just too difficult for us. In Sheffield, it's also dinner time. But for dog lover Billy, the pets always come first. 32 animal mouths to feed, and there's not a can of dog food in sight. I feed my dogs raw chicken. Basically, it's a lot of controversy. People argue about it quite a lot, but my beliefs are that the best thing for your dog is what nature was meant to have them eat, which is basically raw meat, raw bones, uh, fats for energy, not carbohydrates like humans do. Then I top it up with chicken hearts. Only cost me £3.30 a day to feed all my carnivores, which is five dogs, seven cats and four ferrets. Uh, and then... Billy is determined to make a success of her fledgling dog training business and get off benefits for the first time in her adult life. Mealtimes are a chance to practice her training skills. What I do is I try and put them down in a certain order of dogs, which is how I want their hierarchy to be. So I want Bess at the top because she's old and she's struggling, bless her. And then second is I want Bonnie. Third one down order is I want this one because she can't open her mouth properly. And the third, the four I want in charge is him, is down first. And then hers goes down last because she's really naughty and she needs to know that the other dogs oh, yeah, yeah. are in charge. Time to see if Billy's feeding technique has worked. I'm going to let her finish first, so she goes to eat. She's really slow, so she goes to eat. And then this one's really slow as well, so then she goes to eat. I'm going to let him eat. You eat, Sid. This is how I feed Lulu because she's really naughty with food. So I'll hold it out to her and she's allowed to look at it, she's allowed to sniff it. She's not allowed to eat it, no, that's the thing. And then I'll go, okay. And she can chew it, but she can't snatch it from me. Then I go, drop! And then she'll get rewarded with a chicken heart. Good. Okay. Take. And that's how I feed Lulu. <laughs> go on in. On your beds down. Come on.
In Berkshire, animal lover Paul is starting his day with a brew. The house I live in is um, a three-bedroom property, but it's, um, it's a very small three-bedroom property. Paul moved to this council home five years ago, but with two dogs, two cats and 20 chickens, it's a bit of a squeeze. This is the kitchen, it's kind of dining room. That's my jukebox, which is knack, but it's broken, basically. The dogs had knocked it over and the top of it um, broke off, so that's the end of that. They chewed the dining room table, they chewed the chairs, so that's why the dogs get shut out the back now. Living room, uh, go on the internet and watch television. That's where the cat is, it's just basically a dump room in there and the cats get fed in there. It's handy for the cat litter tray. Did you get on my George Michael stuff? Got loads of it. Well, it's a study, officially. Despite having extra rooms in his house, Paul doesn't have to pay the bedroom tax. After I moved here, the bedroom tax came in. I started, I was paying it. I was on Facebook and there was a lovely woman on there and um, she's, uh, she, she's asked me some questions about this, my situation and I said, well, I said, I've got two, two spare bedrooms and I said, I've got no, no bed in them. She said, well, you shouldn't be paying bedroom tax because, you know, it, it's not physically a bedroom. So somebody came out to, to inspect. A couple of weeks later, I received letters to say that I was exempt from the bedroom tax and I, I received a full money of all the money w what I had paid. It was about £1,400. I went out and bought, bought a new cooker, got a, got a new fridge and I bought, bought a cat. It's not, it's not a big house, it's a tiny house. Road's quite busy today. And Eddie Stowe's bar, like, that's another one we can see any lie. Any of our favourites, one of our favourites. In rugby, Kim and Gary still haven't received Kim's benefits back payment. Without it, the couple and their five pets could be facing eviction. This, this is Kimbo, our bearded dragon. So he, he's easy, easy to maintain. Eats, sleeps and poops and sheds. Yeah. He's due, <coughs> he's due to be fed on Friday of this week, so we've got to go and get some... Uh, He'll get, he'll get his mealworms. The couple are £2,000 in debt, but it's not just their pets they choose to spend their benefits cash on. I'm a big Eddie Stobart fan. I've got a lot of the uh, Eddie Stobart models, trucks, and basically anything to do with Eddie Stobart. Most of the models are about £1.99. Well, they start off from £1.99 upwards. It can be an expensive hobby, yeah. When we go out and about, if we see any of the Eddie Stobart trucks, we wave to the drivers. If they're stationary, we go over and say, can I have a picture took by the truck? We've got favourite drivers. I haven't yet met any of them in person, but that'd be a dream to actually go and meet some of those drivers. Ideally as well, if it was ever possible, actually go on a delivery with one of those drivers. It'd be absolutely fantastic. In Sheffield, only after her dogs have eaten, it's dinner time for Billy. Oh, I still haven't decided what I want for tea. While she waits for her dog training business to take off, mm. Billy has learned to economise. I'm, I'm really savvy at buying food. Uh, I, I've literally I know when something's a bargain off the top of my head. If I go to the reduced section in a shop, I can sort of go, now nah, that's not a good price. I go, yeah, we'll get loads of them. Um, with me having a dehydrator as well, when it comes to your um, perishable foods like fruits, um, and me, if needs be, I can just stick it in the, uh, dry it all out. I'll show you some what I made earlier. <laughs> These are some bananas I bought the other week. They were going for 10p a kilogram. So I was here, like, buy some of them. Bought eight kilograms. Tonight, Billy is planning an unusually healthy dinner. Oh, tikka masala. I thought I'd run out of them. I've decided to try and get some vegetables in me as I have broccoli with it. Now, I don't normally like broccoli and I have to really force myself to eat it, but obviously I need it from a five a day. <laughs> Being on benefits for 18 years means Billy is used to cooking on a shoestring. I've struggled with being on benefits since because I, I was I, since I was 15 years old. When I was 15 years old, I was shoved into an hostel. And then when I got my own flat, when I was 16, I wanted to go to college, and I, I got money from the job centre, social security. So I decided to go to college, but you didn't get any extra money to go to college. 
So I was like, why am I paying extra money to do this when I can just stay at home and do nothing? I really don't like broccoli. I want to just lather these in salt. In Berkshire, it's beautiful, isn't it? Paul suffers from anxiety and depression, but he believes his pets are essential for his mental well-being. They are my kids. They then you get the best. You're spoiled, aren't you? If I if I didn't have any any pets, I would just wouldn't do nothing. You just stay in bed. You just don't you just don't do nothing. You've got to have a, 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 a meaning in life to do things. His illness doesn't just mean Paul claims benefits. It also stops him leaving the house. He keeps himself busy looking after his animals. I've owned chickens for five years since I've been here. They just fed, they're just very fair, therapeutic. Paul feeds his chickens daily and mucks them out twice a week. Cost of feeding chickens about six pounds a week. Paul reaps the rewards. Yeah, there's quite a few eggs in here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen eggs. I'm not much of an egg man anymore. Too many of them. I prefer, I prefer a Cadbury's cream egg to, to one of these. His benefits now cover the day-to-day -day cost of keeping all the animals. But 46-year-old Paul had to ask his parents for the 500 quid to buy his chickens and everything to keep them. My parents did all the um, setup for me, so I didn't have to work. I, I didn't have any of that expense to have to pay out on. The wire and the and the post was two hundred pound. Chicken coop itself was another two hundred pound. Um, the automatic door door closer was eighty pound. Then you got the cost of all the ch chickens. I've been very lucky with, with with having help from my parents. A lot of people haven't got that. Bubbles. Come on. I wonder what would happen if we let them out. With Gary off sick and the threat of eviction looming, he and Kim are avoiding thinking about their problems by spending time with their pets. Yeah. The last time we let them out, it's got to be at least a couple of weeks ago. At least a month or two or so we yeah. let them out, wasn't it? Yeah. Come on, then. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> He thinks there's another bird on there because you see yourself in the mirror. They're really entertaining. You can watch them. And, you know, Especially when there's it. nothing on TV. You can sit here for hours watching them. Yeah. A lot of the benefits people think, if you're on benefits, you shouldn't have pets. Pets are a little luxury. They're not a necessity. But why not? Kim and Gary could clear some of their debt, but they say the decision would be too heartbreaking. Selling the pets would be a very, very last resort. Um, you know, they're lot, they're lot, they are a family. Just because they've not got legs like we've got and they can't talk like we can, they're still, they're still family. We were going to sell the bearded dragon because of the money situation that we had problems with. But as it was, we decided not to. So for now, the couple are staying in debt and Kimbo is staying in the family. Apart from his pets, one of Gary's other passions is his motor. Yes, my car is my pride and joy. But if I look after it, it looks after me. But as well as being behind with their rent, Gary can't afford to run his car either. I missed one insurance premium. And basically, because of that, the insurance company have cancelled my policy until I renew it. So tomorrow, hopefully, all being well. I'll be able to get it, the insurance reinstated and then I'll be able to get driving again. Gary bought the car less than a year ago for £200 and he claims it's value for money. Being on benefit, it doesn't really help you much with transport costs. The money you pay on bus fare and such like, you may as well put in petrol. Job done for now. Every time I do this, it rains. Coming up... It's the moment of truth for Kim and Gary. I won't believe it till Kim's actually checked it. 
go. And Billy's big plan goes up a gear. Go, 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 go! This is the beginning of the rest of my life, you know what I mean? Hopefully things will be on the way up from here. <laughs> I've got a break! <laughs> In South Yorkshire, Billy's up bright and early. I don't have a normal cup of tea. I have a slice of lemon and hot water. She's about to start her first job of the day. Get on my pool clothes. Mucking out her flock of ducks and chickens. I get the newspapers for free, and the people that give them me for free, I drop them a few eggs off every once in a while as a thank you. Right, six newspapers for the ducks. Billy's benefit budget doesn't quite stretch to buying her animals' bedding. The dogs don't seem to mind that it's not sawdust or hay, and it gives them something to eat at night. There you go, duckies. Unfortunately, there's no eggs in there today. But it's the end of the world. Hopefully, the chickens will have some eggs. Hey, chickens! Oh, we've got one egg, two eggs, three. Awesome. So it looks like we've got a cracked egg here. Which is always disheartening. So you just think to yourself, I could have had that for breakfast. Billy says she's desperate to get off benefits. I started to um, get business and my, uh, um, and then as soon as I got forty-five pound a week, I just didn't bother signing on at job centre no more. Even though I was only on forty-five pound a week, I just couldn't cope with going at job centre. Technically, they should have been topping me up an extra thirty pound plus five pound spending money. I didn't want it. I just wanted to get clean out of that place. Look at all dogs waiting to go back in. This is all they ever do. They come out, they pee, they go back to bed. If only we all had that pipe dream, eh, guys? In Berkshire... Paul's been claiming benefits for nearly 20 years. Good girl, there you go. Every so often, he has no choice but to leave the safety of his rural retreat and head into town. I just find the anxiety of going shopping now is just an absolute nightmare because you don't, you can't just walk into a supermarket these days. You have to fight and find everything because they keep moving stuff around. And by, by this stage, I'm absolutely exhausted. Being surrounded by crowds of people at the supermarket can set off his anxiety. I only go when I need to get milk and, I, and sugar. That's, that's, that's all I need to get, really. But with his supplies running low, today, Paul has to face a trip to the shops. Paul passes the village where he used to live, but just driving by is a painful reminder that country life isn't always idyllic. When he lived here, he was the victim of an unprovoked attack. I had to move because one day I was out walking my dog and he approached me from behind and attacked me because I'm, I'm gay and it didn't do my mental health any good and it caused me a lot of anxiety and more, more terror attacks. He, made my, he turned my life upside down and made it hell for me. And in the end, I just, uh, I just upped and left. Paul reaches the supermarket, ready to confront the people and the parking. Blimey Park anywhere they're blimmin' light these days. And he makes sure it takes no longer than necessary. Straight in and straight out, and I've got, I, I still got the free coffee. Local paper, um, milk, a few dog treats. I've got Mum a birthday card for tomorrow. My total day was... £7.05. pence, And most of that was my birth Mum's birthday card. <laughs> In rugby, Kim and Gary are anxiously waiting to see if Kim's received her backdated benefits. If they don't pay off the rent they owe, the couple and their animals could be evicted from their flat. Today I'm going to be checking my account and see how much I've got in so that I can pay the rent arrears as soon as we know there's money in there. I won't believe it till Kim's actually checked it. For Kim and Gary, it's the moment of truth. Mm 
Yes, we've been paid. My benefit has been paid in. Got over three grand in there. That's a big... I'd say that's a huge weight that off is. my shoulder. What about you, Gary? Personally, that's a big weight off my shoulders. We know now we won't lose our home and everything like that. Mm -hmm. That's a major, major... I feel like all Christmases come up once. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than Christmas, actually. Yeah. With a lump sum of over £3,000 of benefits now in their bank account, they clear their unpaid rent. I wonder if you could help me. I'd like to pay um, rent arrears off of 1,500, please. All right, thank you, bye. Paid. Paid. And that puts us now to £158.78 in credit. A week in credit. Rent arrears paid, Gary's next priority is to get his car back on the road. Yeah, I'm married. And that means forking out more money on insurance. £521 and one pence for the year. Oh, then, so I'm, I, can get in the, I can get in the car and go and drive it now, can I? Sure. Bye, brilliant. Oh. Yes. I mean, it's all as of three minutes ago. Good. The couple's cash has only just hit their account, <laughs> but within minutes, they've already spent over £2,000. <laughs> and they're making plans to spend some of the rest on a holiday. <sighs> Good sigh for you. Sorry, In Sheffield, Billy is cleaning up after her animals. It's very hard to keep a house clean with dogs and cats. You think kids are bad, dogs and cats are even worse. But you know what's worse than dogs and cats? Dogs and cats and kids. <laughs> Billy's dog training business isn't making enough cash but her constant cleaning has given her an idea. I uh, do love cleaning. I didn't even realise how much I liked it until I got animals. Before I got animals, I didn't do no cleaning. I didn't do nothing. Then I got animals and I was just be like, oh my God, look at all this mess. I need to make a... I need to just start doing a proper job. Because I got ashamed of it. And then when I got the sensation of being proud of the work I'm doing, I would just be like, yeah, I, I, I really want to get into this. And that's what got me setting up my second business, really. Billy's managed to get 40 customers for her cleaning business. I know it could have been better, but I didn't have the financial gain to start off with in the first place. So to say that I've done this from nothing, I think I'm doing all right. And she's already making big plans. I'll only double my clientele base. I can become a limited company, which means I'll be benefit free. Uh, I'll be paying tax. I'll, I'll, I'll be, you know I mean, I'll, I'll be like a non human being, but I'll be in charge of my own business. Go on, move so she can get around more easily and take on more clients, Billy also wants to pass her driving test. But the last time she had a lesson was more than 10 years ago. I feel absolutely terrible. I've got... I've, I just feel nauseous, sick, but I've got to focus on what I'm doing this for. I'm doing this so that I've got transport for me and my dogs and I've got transport on my business and then I can take on more customers and just be self-reliant. To save on the cost of an instructor, Billy's asked mate Delhi to give her a lesson at a local off-road driving centre. Are you sure you really want me to sit on your knee, Adele? Yeah, two seconds. I'm sure this is some sort of chat-up line. Is it on my knee? The plan is she wants me to get used to the biting point. I'm, I think I can learn to do it OK, fine, but... Ow! <laughs> it's not going to work, Adele. It will. It won't. It will, trust me. It won't. No, it's not going to work. Not, not going to work. Exactly, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> My ass is too fat. Right. Too With seconds. Delhi's driving technique not going to plan, the pair adopt a more traditional approach to lesson. Right, need to turn the key. Right, put your seatbelt on. I'm absolutely nervous. <laughs> Packing bits. <laughs> Lift this one up. Lift it up. Go. <laughs> turn. Go, 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 go. <laughs> nice. Stop. Watch. <laughs> I forgot break. <laughs> I can't believe I'm driving. This is me. Right, you're gonna help her. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> With her driving lesson a success, Billy is feeling more confident about her future. Me and the dogs can go places. So this is the beginning of the rest of my life. You know what I mean? Hopefully things will be on the way up from here. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In rugby. 
with their rent arrears paid off, Kim and Gary can finally afford to stock up on food for their pets. Now we're going to get some uh, mealworms for Kimbo, our beardy dragon. Despite having five extra mouths to feed, Kim and Gary claim their pets are good value for money. What we've just bought from the pet store is some um, mealworms for the bearded dragon. Each tub was uh, £2.50, which isn't too bad because that will last our bearded dragon for a fair, fair time. Some people might say it's a luxury having pets on benefit, but it's not really a luxury because some people who can't have kids of their own for one reason or another, then pets I like are, their I like, I like their babies. People who say having pets is a luxury, then in my opinion, they're wrong. Kim and Gary are spending their benefits cash feeding their pets, but they don't waste the chance to get some food for themselves for free. Got issued with a food bank voucher to help us out with our food, with our food. And I've been off sickness for well since November last year, so I've been struggling a little bit. So this uh, food voucher will be able to help out because of that. They're off to a local food bank. I told them about my sickness and everything, and they were really, really helpful. And then they just told us to get a few extra stuff as well. That's on the table in there as well. Loads yeah, we, of mince pies. They wanted to get rid of the mince pies. Crisps and min more mince pies in here. They just wanted rid of them, so... Can do, we can do And he mince lives, pies. loves his mince pies. Pasta. Some kind of Italian stuff. Cereals. Biscuits. Biscuits. Toilet, couple of toilet rolls. Custard bullets, things. Coffee. At least 15, 20 pound in the bag. At least. It's going to help us out. It's going to make what money we have got for food. It's going to make it go further. Coming up. Paul weighs up the benefits of town versus country. Being on benefits and living in the countryside was the best move that I, have, I made. Billy's getting serious about her dog training. She's the one who broke the record on track for most weight pulled ever. <laughs> And Gary waits on the results of his medical tests. If it's a pos positive result and I come back, back then, obviously that's going to be a whole new start in, in mine and Kim's life. In Berkshire, um. unemployed Paul is out walking his dogs. Missy and Roxy. I love it. So quiet, peaceful, and village love. In this part of the countryside, council tenants like Paul are few and far between. Shadowworth. So, uh, a, a very wealthy woman lives in that house, a lady. I've got for leading them. You too. This is another reason why I moved here. That view is priceless. But Paul claims that country life comes at a price. Well, living out in the country like this, I think your money goes a bit less because obviously you've got to allow for the travelling. You know, it costs money to go to and from, so obviously it costs a bit more. But on the long run, it's, it's obviously a lot better. After 14 years living in the countryside, Paul's decided it's the best place for him Good and his animals even on benefits. We won't get this in the city. Obviously, the high population, the build-up, uh, the, the fresh air, you bring cleaner here, and the green open space. I'm definitely a country person. <laughs> Being on benefits and living in the countryside was the best move that I, have, I made. In rugby, Kim and Gary are busy packing away the last of their supplies from the food bank. You won't get it all in. You're not going to get it all in. No, I'm not going to get it all in. With that job complete, Kimbo gets fed first. Got it. He's got it. Oh. He, he was ready for these. Yeah, good boy. That's him fed now for a few days. The next issue is illness that Gary has forced him out of work four months ago. Up to the doctors now for me to get my results. Hopefully they'll be clear and negative and I'll be able to get back to work, but 
it could depend on what the results are. I won't know until the doctor tells me. Gary's had a stomach biopsy taken, which he's hoping reveal exactly what's been causing his blooms. His worst fear is that it could be cancer. If it's a pos positive result and I can't go back to work, then obviously that's going to be a whole new start in, in mine and Kim's life. But I am really, really scared, to be honest. Scared of the unknown. Because this, this basically is the next chapter in my life. Half an hour later, Gary has some news. The uh, biopsies are negative, they're not cancerous. They're still a little bit worried about the cause. They're not really sure, so I've got to go and see my surgeon. Uh, the doctor has given me another sick note. Not going to get back to work? Not straight away. Uh, basically, but because basically what it is, the doctor's, still, the doctor's still worried about it, so he said we need to get this fully sorted out first. Oh, I'm pretty much happy that they're all not cancerous, um, but at the end of the day, we've still got to get through what the problem is, try and get it resolved before the sick note runs out again. In Sheffield, Busted. Billy's feeling positive about learning to drive and expanding her business and spends every moment trying to make it work. This evening, she's training her dogs, Bonnie, Lulu and Saran, in a local park. I remember when I was little, I used to pester my mum and dad for a dog all the time. I eventually a hamster. <laughs> Billy regularly enters the dogs in weight-pulling competitions. She has to keep her hounds in peak physical condition, but with makeshift equipment. Right, well, basically, these are sash weights. They're out the old Victorian windows. They don't look very luxury, do they? <laughs> Using a special harness, the dogs take it in turns to pull the weights up and down the field. Oh. That's it. Good. Billy says she's had to make sacrifices, but they're worth it. It can be an expensive sport, especially when I'm entering three or four dogs at a time. It works out, it's like 35 quid a go. So, uh, when I, when I, did, when I uh, entered the um, UK Nationals, it was £15 per dog, that was 60 quid. Um, it was really expensive, but I don't go on holiday. Um, I didn't buy proper food for a week. Well, I don't buy proper food anyway. Do you know what I mean? I made some serious cutbacks for a couple of months before I could, like, you know what I mean, get the money together to participate. Lulu's turn. Billy is particularly proud of two-year-old champion Lulu. She's the one who uh, broke the record on track for most weight pulled ever. So she is very, very strong. <laughs> It's a dog's life. Right, good mum. But Billy wouldn't have it any other way. I'll get you guys back. Get something to eat, eh? Shall we have a tea? Since filming ended, Kim and Gary have a new addition to their family. We've had two new arrivals of crested geckos. They're a breeding pair. And are celebrating being debt-free with their dream holiday. But to holiday to Skegness for a week. Paul remains convinced that benefits are his only option. If I get a downfall where I'm currently ill, I've I've got no money. So I'm just I'm, I'm in the safety net. I'm in the best place to be. And Billy's still building up her businesses, but has gone into debt to give herself a treat. Tattoos of zebra stripe. Now I've just been like, stuff it. I've not paid my gas bill, electric bill. Um, and I've skipped a bit of rent as well to pay for it, but yeah, I've gone out and got myself a new tattoo. Five stars got hot goss and even hotter guests next as we stay up late with Rylan and catch up on all the best of this week's action.